math. Everyone's favorite subject, right? Well, I know most people find math confusing and hard, and they just don't like it. But I think it can be fun. You may not get some of the things that I'm going to talk about over the next few minutes, but hopefully you'll learn a little. Who likes pie? I do. What this picture has to do with is the area of a circle. The area of any circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. So the area of the circle is equal to our picture, pi r squared. I know, I know. Where I come from, pi are round, but not in this case. How about a pizza pie? If you'd like to find the volume of this pizza, you would need the area of the surface, which is a circle, and the depth. To find the volume of the pizza, simply multiply the area of the circle, pi r squared, times the depth. In this picture, pi times z times z times a. What is pi? We use the Greek letter pronounced pi to represent the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. Pi is a constant, always equal to 3.1415 and like a million more places past the decimal. And in the corner, octopi! Is this real? No. Octopi is a pi symbol with eight tentacles. Pi is an irrational number, meaning its value cannot be expressed exactly as a fraction, having integers in both the numerator and denominator. Consequently, its decimal representation never ends and never repeats. An imaginary number can be written as a real number multiplied by the imaginary unit i. When you see i, we're working with imaginary numbers. An imaginary number is a number whose square is less than or equal to zero. For example, square root of negative 1 is an imaginary number. When you square the square root of negative 1, you simply get negative 1, which is less than 0. Thus, the square root of negative 1 is an imaginary number. A fraction represents a part of a whole, or more generally, any number of equal parts. A common fraction, such as 1 half or 3 fourths, consists of an integer numerator and a non-zero integer denominator the numerator representing a number of equal parts and the denominator indicating how many of those parts make a whole. The problem here says to expand. Expanding means removing the parentheses, but you have to do it right. To expand the quantity a plus b to the n, you would have to write it a plus b times a plus b times a plus b n times, which means the quantity of a plus b times the quantity of a plus b n times. Tips for a word problem. Read the entire problem. List information and variables you identify. Attach units of measure to the variables. Define what answer you're looking for. Work in an organized manner. Working clearly will help you think clearly. Draw and label all pictures. Explain the shape of the graph. This person described it visually. What the question was really looking for is something along the lines of, as the time goes on, the mass gets smaller which is shown by the downward sweeping curve, or that there is a large drop in the mass as the time gets bigger, but as the time gets even bigger, the mass seems to level out. Each dance move on this page is associated with a graph of a function. For example, the sine of x, the graph of the sine of x is like a wave, hence the arms, and x squared, a function of x squared makes a parabola which looks like a u, hence those dance moves. Graphing even or odd. You can see if you put a u or a w on an xy axis, they would both be symmetric about the y axis. That mirroring is hallmark of even functions. The s shape would be symmetric about the origin. This symmetry is a hallmark of odd functions. In geometry, a point is an entity that has a location in space or on a plane, but no extent. A triangle is composed of three points and three sides. A square is composed of four points and four sides. A circle, on the other hand, is pointless. A right angle is always equal to 90 degrees. Note the special symbol like a box in the angle. If you see this, it is a right angle. The 90 degrees is rarely written in. If you make a triangle out of your right angle, the side that is opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. An acute angle is one with a measure between 0 and 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is more than 90 but less than 80. Two angles are complementary if they add to 90 degrees. They don't have to be next to each other, 
so long as the total is 90. Pythagorean Theorem. In any right triangle, the area of a square whose side is the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the areas of the squares whose sides are the legs. In other words, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this picture, 3 squared plus 4 squared should equal x squared, so x equals 5. The trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent are functions of an angle. They are used to relate the angles of a triangle to the lengths of the sides. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. A tangent line of a curve is a line that touches one point on the curve. The word tangent comes from the Latin tangier, to touch. In geometry, the tangent line to a plane curve at a given point is the straight line that just touches the curve at that point. The concept of a limit is used to describe the value that a function or sequence approaches but doesn't touch as the input or index approaches some value. Limits are essential to calculus and are used to define continuity, derivatives, and integrals. Last but not least, the derivative. The derivative is a measure of how a function changes as its input changes. When taking a derivative, the notation looks like the picture. Red, the derivative of optimus with respect to x is equal to optimus prime.